Hello there, this is Harry Du. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an OLAP cube with MacroID Python SDK, also known as Mysterious Pi. OLAP cube is also known as Intelligence Cube, and it used the um, attribute matrix from MacroID schema and to create a cubes. So let's get started. First, I'm going to set up some session. So this is the login I'm going to use. I'm going to connect my environment, provide a login. So I need, in order to create a queue, I need to prepare some data. So in order to create a queue, I need to ha have a, a list of attribute IDs and matrix IDs. So I'm going to import these um, two modules. I'm going to use the attribute class to create a, um, to look up the attribute. I'm, I'm going to use the list attribute to list uh, uh, attribute available for me to use. I'm going to use a matrix to look up matrix by ID. I'm going to use this to, uh, list all the metrics I can use. And this is just for exploratory. And when you create actual queue, you actually can use this ID. So if you know this ID already, you actually don't need to use this to look up. So if you know this ID already, you can just use an ID and name and create a queue based on the ID. So for this demo, I have a, a bunch of uh, IDs I want to use. I'll show you how to discover those IDs. So I'm going to use category, uh, year for attri uh, attributes and profit and revenue for metrics. So let's define this. So let's include this package and also define this uh, JSON. Okay, next I'm going to show you how to look up attribute, right? If you uh, don't know what is attribute you wanna use, what is ID you wanna use, you can use this list attribute function to look up. If you run this, it will show you a list of attributes and create the attribute of object, right? You have ID and name. So for example, category is the one I wanna use. I have an ID here, right? With this list attribute method, you can also do search. So if you look at the documentation, um, there's a search pattern you can use. Search pattern you can use, you can search by uh, exact match or begin with or contents and you pass in the name. And you can also set up some filter. You can filter by creating uh, dates, right? creating time, and other things. You can also get a result in different format. You can do two dictionary. You can also set up limit, how many results you want to return. So um, similarly, you can also do this for metrics. You can also list all the available metrics in the project. If you know the ID already, you can look up. If you want to look up the attribute, you can look up the attribute by ID using this constructor. So if you if I run this, I'm, I'm going to find this ID, right? The name is category. And if you want to look up the documentation. For metrics, you can also look up the attribute by ID. So you can also find attribute by ID when you run this, it will return the matrix object. For this demo, uh, I already have the ID I want to use. So I'm going to use this OLAP cube class, create function, create method to create a, a cube. So to run this cube method, I need to have a, I need to have a name, which is my cube's name. I, I need to have a folder ID, which is the folder I want to put in my cubes in. I need to have a, a list of attribute and this each item in the attribute will be a dictionary with the data like, uh, let's, let me clean up here. The data is like this. So it's a dictionary with ID and names. So in this, I'm going to create a cube with two, uh, with one attribute and one matrix one metric and one attribute. So let's run this. Okay, so now I'm creating the cube, right? So cube is created and it has an ID. This is the ID. If I want to uh, find the ID of the cube, I can run cube.id, so it's the same ID. So the new cube is called Harry Olap cube. If I look at um, the, if I look, at, look up the, my uh, workstation, I right, go to my workstation under data set. Uh, 
section, you can see this new cube created. If I try to edit this, you see it's not a uh, published. It shows a message says it's not published. It, the cube object is created, but the cube has no data, right? We haven't published any data to the cube yet. So in order to publish the data, you can call publish cube dot publish to publish data into the cube. If I call this, it will send a request to publish cube. It depends on how big the cube. It take, may take some time. Uh, so for my cube, it's pretty small. So uh, let me close this and try to open this again. If I open this again, you see the data is ready, right? I have a uh, three years and uh, with some metric value. Okay, so that's my cube. Next, I'm going to show you uh, some of the properties in the cube, right? So once you have a cube object, okay, you can fetch a cube by ID. So I know the ID. So this is a new cube ID I just created. I'm going to copy this ID and post here and run this. I will have a cube object. So I can look up, I can print out my cube object. So this is my cube object. I can look up all the properties in my cube. So I can check uh, attribute in my cube, which is here. I can look up a list of metrics. I only have one profit. I can also look up the attribute element in the cube. By right year, we have a uh, three, right? three attribute uh, element is consistent with this. So I can also list, call this method list of properties to list all the properties on my cube. I can also look up the VLDB settings, All right? And if I want to, I can show the status of the queue and I can also unpublish. If I unpublish the queue, uh, the data will be removed from the queue. You will see that web message again if you try to open the queue. So let's try to do this. So unpublish, I say yes. And if I close this queue, close this, and open this again, right? Edit this again. You'll see that message says uh, not published. Okay. Now uh, let's let's modify the cube. Now I'm going to unpublish cube. Yes. Okay. I'm going to make some modifications to the cube. I can fetch the cube again, so I can use ID uh, to fetch the cube again. So let me fetch the cube again. Okay, I'm going to use the ID to fetch the cube again. Now let's let's make some modification to my cube. So right now I have one attribute in the cube and one metric in the cube. So uh, next I want to add a category also to my cube. I can call cube.update. It will update my cube and tell me true. Okay, and then I will publish cube. So let's look at the cube again. If I refresh, edit the cube again, you'll see categories are also added to my cube, right? Uh, I'll, okay, let's close this. Let's do uh, unpublish. And I'll, I'll make another modification. So let's update the queue with just uh, uh, with category and a profit. So if I call this, my queue will have a one attribute, one metrics, attribute is category and uh, metric is profit. So let's do this, update and publish. So let's refresh and look at the cube again. Now I have a category and a profit, right? See, I have a category and a profit. So once you have a cube, you can uh, use the cube to create a dossier, to create a hypercard, and uh, to get a data and to export to other system, do whatever you want. So. You can like create a new dossier. Let me try to create a new dossier with the queue. We'll see a new dossier is created. 
uh, I need to yeah add data. Okay, to the dossier, you can see the new dossier is created, right? All right. So let's close this. If you want to delete the cube, you can call cube and delete. It will delete the cube. So if I create select this, it will ask me uh, confirmation. So if I say yes, uh, the cube will be deleted. You can also pass in the per, um, argument. This will be tell this tell the delete method to uh, whether to prompt or not. So since the cube is deleted, let's go back to my uh, workstation. If I refresh this, you will see this is this will be gone. Right, the cube is gone. So let, let's recap. So in this video, I show you how to um, create a OLAP cube and how to modify the OLAP cube and how to publish the cube and how to uh, look up information for you to create this cube and how to delete a cube. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.